Hi everyone, welcome back to our statistics tutorial series. In the previous tutorial, we looked at data collection methods. But in this tutorial, we are going to look at sampling techniques. Before we start looking at sampling techniques, I need to tell you what sampling itself is and why it is important. Okay, now listen attentively. Sampling is a process of selecting a subset of a population for analysis. Simple as that. So when you select a subset of a population for analysis, that is sampling. Okay. Now why is it important? Collecting information from the entire group of interest, that's a population, will consume time. So sampling saves time. That's one of the importance of sampling. You see that. And it also helps reduce cost. Collecting data from the entire group of interest will cost you more than just collecting data from the subset of that group of interest. You get it. That's another importance of sampling. Okay. Now let's look at the main thing, which is sampling techniques. Now it is important to know that we have two sampling techniques. The first one is called probability sampling technique. Okay. And then the second one is non probability sampling technique okay now this first one which is probability sampling technique you can also call it random sampling technique okay and then you can also call this non-random sampling technique okay now for the probability or random sampling technique it ensures that every member of the population has equal chance of being selected equal chance you have chance the keyword chance of being selected okay so we are going to look at these four probability sampling techniques the first of them is simple random sampling the second is systematic random the third is stratified and then the fourth is cluster and then for the non probability sampling techniques these are some examples okay but first let's look at the probability sampling techniques so we are going to look at each of these so let's start with the simple random sampling now for the simple random sampling each individual has an equal chance of being selected okay but it requires the complete list of the population and we have several methods of performing simple random sampling and one of them is the lottery method okay now this is how the lottery method is done now what the members of the population are identified with either by name or by a particular number we are going to write them either their names or their numbers so we are going to write them on slips of paper okay like small small pieces of paper then you fold them well then you mix them together thoroughly and you randomly select the number you want to pick let's say you need uh, five of them you just randomly pick five okay and this is suitable when the group of interest or the population is not large okay it's small let's assume you have a class with population of 50 and then you need a sample of five from that class you see that the group of interest the population is not too large so you can easily use the lottery method for that then another method is random number table now for the random number table we are going to use some statistics table okay but check the description area below for a link on how to do the random number table method okay and then another one is random number generator for this we use some statistics software or tools to generate sample you can use excel python r data and the like okay but if you want to know how to do that check the link in the description area below just as the second one okay and another one is the shuffling method the shuffling method is just like the lottery method okay for this, we are going to give each member of the population a specific ID, a unique ID. Now, after giving them the ID, then you shuffle the list of the IDs. You can do that manually or you can also use some software. Then if you need, let's say, a sample of five, you just randomly pick the first five. Okay. So that's all about simple random sampling for now. So let's go to the next one, which is systematic random sampling. Now, for the systematic random sampling, we select samples at regular intervals from the population. This is how we do it. First of all, we will calculate the sampling interval. 
Now, we are going to represent the sampling interval with k. And then to calculate the sampling interval, which is k, we are going to say the size of the population, which we represent with capital letter N, okay, divide by the sample we need, okay, the sample size we need, okay. So we use small letter N to represent sample size. And then we use capital letter N to represent population size, okay. So we are going to be selecting the k individual. Now, let's take some example. Now, let's say this is statistics class. These are the students in the class. That's the population of the class. Now, to find K, we will need the population size. So, what's the population size? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So, the population size is 15. So, we say equals 15. Now, let's say we need a sample of 3 from that class. Okay. So, we say 15 divided by 3. Okay. So when we take 15 divided by 3, that will give us what? That will give us 5. So we are picking every fifth term. Now this is how you are going to select your sample. Now you can decide to take the first 5 individuals and randomly pick one from them. You can use a simple random method to pick one from the first 5. The simple random method we learned initially. You can use it to pick one from the first 5. So let's say you randomly pick this person. Okay. You randomly pick this person. So what you are going to do is you will count one. So the fifth position falls on this person. So we just pick this person. Then from this person also we count five again. One, two, three, four, five. So it falls on this. So you see that we ended up getting a sample of three that we need. So that's a simple explanation to systematic random sampling. So let's look at the next one, which is stratified sampling. For the stratified sampling, we divide the population into subgroups based on a particular characteristic. And the subgroups are called strata. Okay. Now, as I said, we divide the population into subgroups known as strata based on a particular characteristic. Now, that characteristic can be maybe their age or their gender. Let's take example so that you understand how it is done properly. Okay. So, let's say... This is the population of mass class. Okay, these are the students in the class. Mass class, okay. Now, let's divide the mass class into subgroups, okay, by the agenda. So, this is the population of male. Then we have the female also separately. Now, the total population size is 20, okay. When you count all of them, they are 20. And male population is not yet a sample. The population of male in that class, okay, is 12, okay, when you count it. And then... The population of female in our class is 8. You see that. N subscript M. I use M to represent female. So N M. You see that. N M. Population of female. You know, capital letter N means population size. You get it. Now, let's assume we need sample of 5 in total. Okay. Let's assume we need sample of 5 in total. This is what we are going to do. First of all, we need to know the percentage of male in that class. And the percentage of female in the class. Okay. Now, to find the percentage of male in that class, we are going to take male population, which is 12, and divide it by the total population, which is 20, and multiply the results by 100%. So, when we do that, you see, we have 12 over 20 times 100. That will give us 60%. You see. Then we do that for female population also. So, we take female population, divide by total population, times 100 and that will give us 40 percent so we know the percentage of male in that class and then we know the percentage of female in that class now let me tell you how these two percentages are going to help us now you see in total we need a sample of five okay but we need to determine that of these five you know how many should we pick from male and how many should we pick from female so to determine that we find their percentages in the class and that's going to help us. So let's see how to do that. Now, to know the number of male that will form part of the sample, this is what we'll do. We'll take the percentage of male in the class, okay, which is 50%. Then we multiply it by the sample needed, which is 5. So 60% is the same as 60 over 100, right? Then times the sample size needed. So that will give us 3. Then we do that for the female also. So... Sample of female that will be used will be equal to 
40 percent that's 40 over 100 times the sample needed which is 5 and that will give us 2 so to get our sample of 5 we will need 3 male and 2 females how then do we get these 3 male and these 2 females this is how we do it pay attention you are going to use the simple random method or the systematic random method which we learned previously you are going to use either of them to get three samples from the population of male and also do that for female you get two from female so in total you have five samples you see that's interesting right so let's look at the next one which is cluster sampling now for the cluster sampling this is how we do it first you divide the population into clusters okay you can do that by their location okay then you randomly select the entire clusters for the sample. Let's take an example. Let's assume we are studying the time spent on learning by university students. Okay. Now the population is going to be all university students in Ghana. Okay. Then we can divide the population into clusters, maybe by their universities. So University of Ghana, KNUST, and the like. Okay. Now let's assume we have 66 universities. You can randomly pick 11 out of them. Okay. Now, this is how you are going to treat those 11. Now, it's either you survey all students in a selected university, okay, or you randomly select a subset of students from each selected university. That's the 11 selected universities, okay. If you should go for the one you survey all students in the 11 selected universities, that is one stage cluster sampling. But if you go for the one that you randomly select a subset of students from the 11 selected university then that's called a two-stage cluster sampling okay in another tutorial we'll look at the non-probability or non-random sampling techniques so it's important to click on like for this video share it and also subscribe to the channel for more tutorials thank you and see you in the next tutorial